Hey, welcome to your new video. Giving birth is truly a mesmerizing process, but some sea creatures take it to a whole different level. Today, we'll be talking about the most unique ways sea creatures produce their offspring. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 10. During the breeding season, male seals start behaving aggressively towards each other to capture the attention of desirable females. Only the dominant males earn the privilege to mate with the females. To maximize their chances, male seals refrain from eating during this period. It's worth noting that male seals don't limit themselves to a single female. Rather, they strive to mate with as many females as possible. The female develops eggs that are safeguarded within their uterus by protective fluids. The gestation period for seals can last up to nine months, ensuring that the pup is fully developed before birth. As the time nears for the pup's arrival, the female returns to the breeding grounds, preparing for the next generation of seal pups. Females give birth on land, ice, or shallow water. They also leave their pups for extended periods of time while they hunt and forage. Number 9. Before mating of squids, a courtship ritual takes place in the open water. When sexually mature males and females encounter each other, they engage in a circling behavior that can last several hours, varying among different species. During this courtship, they may undergo color changes, serving both as a defense mechanism against predators and as a means to impress the female. The mating process of squids involves the males transferring their sperm capsules through specialized arms into the female's mantle cavities. Once the eggs are fertilized, the females descend to the seafloor where they lay a considerable number of eggs, which can range up to 100,000, depending on the species. Number 8. Male mouth brooding is common amongst cardinal fish like the Bangai cardinal fish. This means the male carries the eggs in his mouth. Bangai cardinal fish are native to the Bangai Islands in Indonesia and were first discovered in the late 1990s. The reproductive process begins with a courtship dance performed by the female to attract the male. Following this courtship display, the female releases approximately 40 eggs into the water. These eggs are interconnected by filaments, forming what is known as a clutch. The male fertilizes the eggs as they are released, and in a remarkable display of parental care, he swiftly sucks up all the eggs into his mouth. For approximately a month, the male Bangai cardinal fish carries the eggs in his mouth. During this incubation period, it is believed that the male does not eat. When the incubation period concludes, the baby Bangai cardinal fish swim out of the male's mouth each resembling a miniature version of an adult Bengai cardinal fish. Out of the original clutch of around 40 eggs, approximately 20 baby fish are born. Some experts think that the male swallows, either by design or by accident, a portion of the eggs for sustenance. Number 7. The male stingray fertilizes the eggs by inserting his claspers, which are modified pelvic fins, into the female's opening called the cloaca. Once the eggs are fertilized, the female stingray expels them from her body through her cloaca. The eggs are encased in protective capsules or cases. After the incubation period, the eggs hatch and the baby stingrays, known as pups, emerge from the capsules. The newborn pups are fully formed and ready to begin their independent lives. Laying eggs instead of giving birth to live young is called oviparity. This reproductive strategy allows for the survival and development of the stingray offspring in their respective habitats. Stingrays usually give birth in water, but they can also jump out of water and give birth when under stress. Number 6. When the male splashing tetra is ready to breed, he actively searches for a suitable spawning site. Once found, he engages in a courtship display to attract a mature female. The pair will leap from the water together, connected by their ventral fins, and land against the selected spawning site. The female promptly releases 5 to 10 eggs, which are immediately fertilized by the male. This process is repeated multiple times, until approximately 150 to 200 eggs have been deposited. After this, the female no longer displays a role 
and caring for the brood, but the male Splash Tetra diligently tends to the clutch of eggs by flicking his tail and splashing water onto them, ensuring they remain moist. After approximately 36 hours, the eggs hatch, signaling the end of parental care. Number 5. Persian Carpet Flatworms are hermaphroditic creatures. They possess two penises and, during mating, these flatworms engage in a unique fencing-like interaction. Their aim is to jab and inject sperm into their opponent while avoiding being fertilized themselves. They can inject their sperm into any region they manage to penetrate successfully. Once injected, the spermatozoa go through their partner's body, visible as pale streaks resembling lightning jacks, en route to the ovaries for fertilization of the eggs. This process allows the Persian carpet flatworms to engage in simultaneous reciprocal fertilization, making use of their hermaphroditic reproductive capabilities. Number 4. Clownfish undergo a reproductive strategy known as sequential hermaphroditism. All clownfish are born as males. They live in structured schools consisting of several males and a single female. The dominant fish in the group is the female, usually the largest individual. The second in command within the school is typically the largest and most aggressive male. He is the exclusive breeding partner for the female. When the female lays her eggs, which can number in the thousands, the dominant male fertilizes them. He carefully guards the high quality eggs, eliminating those of poor quality. Once the eggs hatch, the baby fish ascend to the surface and feed on plankton until they mature. In the event that the female of the group dies, the male next in line undergoes a remarkable transformation, changing sex to become female. Number 3. Octopuses have relatively short lifespans. They are classified as semelperous creatures, meaning they reproduce just once in their lifetime and then die. The mating process in octopuses depends on the species. In the first scenario, the male octopus clings tightly to the top or side of the female, engaging in what can be described as an aggressive cuddle. During mating, the male inserts his specialized arm, called the hectocotylus, into the female's mantle cavity and transfers sperm. In the second scenario, the male octopus detaches his hectocotylus and hands it to the female for later use. Once the female is prepared to lay her eggs, she retrieves the stored hectocotylus from her mantle and spreads the sperm over the eggs to fertilize them. Throughout the gestation, the mother remains with her eggs, refraining from eating or moving. By the time the babies are ready to hatch, she is near starvation. Using her last reserves of energy, she blows the hatched offspring into the open water before eventually dying. Number 2. Unlike most fish, it is the male seahorse that carries and gives birth to the offspring. During courtship, the female horse transfers her eggs to a special pouch located on the male's abdomen. This pouch is known as a brood pouch. Once the eggs are inside the male's brood pouch, he fertilizes them with a sperm. Inside the brew pouch, the eggs develop and grow. The male seahorse actively regulates the temperature and salinity of the pouch to create an optimal environment for the embryos. After a period of incubation, which can last from a few weeks to several months depending on the species, the male seahorse goes through a process called parturition. This is when he gives birth to the fully formed baby seahorses, known as fry. Number 1. The incubation period of sea turtle eggs can vary depending on factors, such as the species of sea turtle, the size of the clutch, and the temperature and humidity in the nest. In general, most species have an incubation period, ranging from 45 to 70 days. Research has shown that the sex of the turtle embryos is influenced by the temperature inside the nest. Lower temperatures tend to result in more male hatchlings, while higher temperatures favor the development of females. Sea turtle eggs hatch throughout the year, but the majority of hatchings occur during the summer months. Once the hatchlings are ready to emerge, they use a temporary egg tooth, called a carbuncle, to assist them in breaking open the shell. It may take them three to seven days to dig their way to the surface after hatching. Upon reaching the ocean, the young turtles of many species 
tend to disappear for a period of one to three years, a term referred to as lost years. What reproduction story did you enjoy the most? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.